Dear Mariners, Welcome, to my channel The Sailing Beast. Please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for updates on upcoming videos. Question Explain Anchoring Answer Good bridge management in anchoring operations is the key to achieving safe anchoring and avoiding accidents. It includes anchoring planning, risk assessment, best anchoring practices, anchoring watchkeeping, etc. Ship companies should set up procedures for these critical tasks and incorporate them into the safety management system. Surroundings of anchoring Risk assessment and plan to anchor Anchoring operation is part of a passage plan, which must be carefully planned, executed and monitored. An effective anchoring plan can prevent anchor accidents and avoid any operational failure. A detailed risk assessment of the anchoring operation should be carried out to formulate an effective plan and to make prudent decisions when facing emergencies. If you expect wind force to increase, the possibilities of anchor dragging must be part of the risk assessment. An alternative anchorage should also be prepared if the initial selected anchoring position is unavailable. The anchor plan should be prepared by the master considering the following elements. The limitation of the anchoring equipment. It is only designed to hold the vessel in good holding ground, and not to hold the vessel off fully exposed coasts in rough weather. The available depth and type of holding ground at this anchorage. Maximum depth of anchoring must be applied. Do not anchor in depths beyond windless hauling capacity with allowance of efficiency reduction for old windless. The minimal under keel clearance. In a calm weather and smooth seas condition, the UKC should be at least 20% of maximum vessels draft in loaded condition. Location of the anchorage designed for the vessel. Tide. Direction and strength of the current in the anchorage area. The immediate and predicted weather, wind direction and strength, visibility, sea condition of wave, swell, etc. The availability of adequate sea floor. The safety swinging circle of the vessel, a circle with a minimum radius including length of anchor chain and the vessel's length overall. The proximity of navigational hazards. An adequate safety distance to the nearest vessels and navigational facilities. An alternative anchorage if the initial selected anchoring position is unavailable. The anchor to be used with the condition of anchor, anchor chains, windlass, brake band, chain stopper, lashing devices, etc. The master should also determine the operation mode of the engine according to the type of anchorage, weather conditions and the distance from other vessels, shoals and navigational hazards. Anchoring Operation The following points should be considered for safe anchoring. Determining which anchor to use depends largely on the vessel and condition of the anchors. The basic principle is that the anchor must be in good holding and heaving condition. Sternway speed, the speed over the ground need to be minimized when the vessel dropping the anchor and the chain paying out. In general, it should be limited to about 0.5 to 1.0 knots. For VLCCs, it should be from 0.25 to 0.5 knots only. Laying the chain across the ground in an orderly manner can avoid excessive strain on the chain. Observed GPS speed might not be reliable if the speed is less than 0.5 knot. It is very difficult to be accurate at such low speed over the ground. Anchor chain paid out, wrong practice in dropping the anchor may cause chain entangling accidents or loss of the anchor. Most accidents are caused by uncontrolled running out speed of the anchor chain and poor condition of the brake when dropping the anchor. The running out speed should be limited to 5 to 6 meters per second and the brake force must be used to control the speed. In shallow waters, up to the depth of 25 meters, the customary practice is to let go the anchor from the hose pipe or 1 meter above water by releasing the brake. If the water depth of the anchorage is between 25 to 50 meters, release the anchor about 5 meters above the sea bottom with the windlass, and then let go the anchor by releasing the brake. If the water depth of the anchorage exceeds 50 meters, release the anchor and the chain with the windlass until the chain walking out to the required length. However, if the water depth is above 80 meters, do not drop anchor as the maximum anchor depth for most vessels are designed to the rule of 82 meters, 3 shackles.
the master should check the class limitation of the vessel to ensure the windless heaving capacity limits do not exceed it for the anchoring depth. Length of cable, the cable length that should be released depends on factors such as water depth, draft, windage area, strength of wind and current, and anchorage congestion. The previous information of the cable length, 3.5 to 4 times the water depth, is no longer enough to prevent vessel from dragging if anchoring is affected by wind and current. A general guide, the cable length of should be 3 times of the water depth plus 90 meters in normal condition. It should be 6 shackles under normal circumstance for a depth of 25 meters. In rough weather condition, the cable length should be 4 times the water depth plus 150 meters. Congested anchorage is one of the exceptions. For example, in Singapore roads, there should be 3 shackles in the water for handy size vessel, and only 4 shackles in the water are acceptable for Panamax. Anchor in standby, if there are underwater cables and pipelines.